Hey Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to talk about holding a piece. Now work holding is one of the most important things you have to master if you're going to be a good wood turner. You have to figure out how to hold every shape, every way, all the time. And work holding is an art. Today we're going to play around a little Venturi vacuum system. Now there are all kinds of vacuum systems. This is the simplest, cheapest, easiest to get into. And if you want to know more, you know the deal, you got to watch. This is a hold fast vacuum generator. It uses a series of Venturis inside of it, air powered, to create a vacuum. Now, Venturis to create vacuums used in jet aircraft and motors, all kinds of places. And this has got a couple of small Venturis in it. Now, you'd be amazed how simple the inside is, but how difficult it is to maintain if you don't keep the line clean and dry. Clean and dry means it, once you stop using this thing tonight and you go put it away, you plug that hole because dust in that hole will mess up your Venturis. So you have to maintain the system. Now it runs on 40, 45 pounds of air, 50 is better. A hundred is not better. So it likes 50 to 65 maximum with a minimum airflow of about 2 CFM. Now I've got several little pony compressors that will keep up this thing all day long. Now it has a gauge on regulator and this one got a little crushed. The plastic's gone but I regulate it off my other compressor. And it's got a vacuum gauge. And I've had this thing get up to about 25, 26 inches of vacuum. Now, or ounces, pardon, it's inches of uh, vacuum. Now, if you think uh, inches, can I go more? You can't go more than 30. That's a positive vacuum. So, this is a nifty device. This, with the hose and the adapter, I'll show you in a minute, sell for two something at most of the crafts uh, catalogs. Now, if you have, now besides this, which is about two or three hundred dollars with the gizmos and gadgets to make it work, you could go to a vacuum pump like a Gast or others used for refrigeration work. Check it out before you buy it, even a used one, and watch the deals online. Make sure there's a return policy through eBay or anybody else that you get one through. Uh, this is a Venturi system. You have to have a compressor with the others. You don't need a compressor. And I've heard guys say, this is a toy. The other's really good. Well, this toy works pretty good for me. I've held uh, some pretty good sized stuff with it. Now, in setting it up, you have to have a way to get the vacuum through your headstock to the piece. One way has got a nifty adapter that fits in line that you just put it on and it works really well. But, if you don't have that technology, this little kit from Holdfast works really good. Let me show you with the chuck or the, oh, the bowl. Now, they sell a nice aluminum rig that's all aluminum and it's got gasket material on the face of it. Uh, the one I bought was for a different lathe, so I sold it off. And now I have a two pieces of three quarter plywood that I turned. I made a recess. I put the hub from a clean out on it put a couple of grooves in the face of it. I bought this corded material which is a closed cell um, gasket product and I glued it on there and it's all with super glue. No magic there. There's a depression in the bottom. I have a bottle, a bottle bung stopper on it here. This is lamp pipe. This goes, presses against the bottom of the piece, goes through the head side, side set, comes out the other end and this component right here makes it all work. This is a spinning, a bearing that allows the pipe to spin and the hose to stay still. And this is the magic piece. Now these folks are smart enough not to sell this by itself. You have to buy the kit to get this. So if you're looking to get into it, get the kit. Now I have a, bra, a pipe going through. I go to the other end of my headstock and I have a little hand wheel down here with a countersink also in it. I tighten up the end with a plastic pivot 
until I put some pressure on this bung, this cork bung I picked up at the hardware store, and I pull it tight. Now as soon as it's tight, I'm, I know I'm sealed to here. Now, so I can say when I turn on inventory and I put my finger over this hole, I'm going to get about 10 to 15 ounces or inches of, of, of uh, vacuum. Now, that's good. Then I have to wonder if this, if, if this is sealed. So I take a piece of plexiglass, set it across the face, turn on a venturi and pull up against it, and I will get the same one. So I know I'm good to hear. That's critical, is, is to, to eat the elephant one bite at a time. So right now I know I'm good here. Then I'm going to take the piece that I want to hold. This eye piece is where, why we're doing this. I'll take this piece we want to hold. I'll put it up against the vacuum chuck, and I'm going to bring a center up to center it, because I want to be able to sand this again. So I'm going to bring my center up. Now it'll it'll push a little bit out of center, but to make this work, and I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit here, gang. Okay. Uh, to make this work, I'm going to turn up the vacuum, and I'm not drawing anything. I don't think you can see this, but that's down at zero. But if I tighten up a look at it, I'm up to about 10 ounces, or 10 inches, pardon me. I'm going to keep doing that because it confuses me, okay? But then when I back off, pull the headstock back, I'm clear here, I'm still at 10 ounces, or 10 inches. And I've got a really good hold. I could move the headstock out the way. Sand this, clean this up. If I had to do some detail work, do all the detail work on it with 10 inches of vacuum. That's a pretty good grab. I'm a good sized boy. And that's on there. Now, if it went up to all the way to the 30 inch mark, I might crack and deform the bottom of this. So it wouldn't benefit me to have a whole lot of pressure. Now, if you're dealing with something really thin or something punky, you might run into a little problem of pulling too much on it and cracking it. So especially if you turn a big thin bowl and you want to pull on one point, you have to back off a little bit. Now if you think the piece is leaking a little and you're not getting a good vacuum because of that, spray a little water on it and watch the gauge. If the pressure, if the, the vacuum increases with a little bit of water, it's sucking air through the wood. There's a couple of things. Seal the wood. Seal the inside with something, not while you have the vacuum on it because you'll really screw it up. Spray, you know, take it off, seal the inside with something that will clock it up or clog it up. Say you're doing a natural edge bowl and you want to turn it around and do, do the other side. Put a finish on that side so you pull against the finish too. Now when you get done, you're going to have some marks on the finish where you've pulled it away from the wood a little bit. That's easy to buff up. You don't have a lot to do on that. Now this piece is ready to go, and as you can see, because the pipe has got the roller on it, out a little side footage here, I'm, hope, I'm tight here, I'm centered, I can do some work, I've got 10 inches of vacuum, the line's flexed, my big compressor didn't kick on yet. I'll go about 20 minutes, 25 minutes set up like this before I use that, um, what is that? 30 gallons of air that's in there. That's the basic rig. This whole thing can be replaced with a gas or a regular vacuum pump that creates negative pressure. You can take all that off and do it the same thing. Nothing else would change. If you had the gas, you'd still need that pivot or that bearing or that one-way adapter or something similar. You still need to do that. Now, let me shut everything down here. Isn't that sweet? There are no marks on this. It might have been pulling a little bit through the wood, but let me explain something to you. A while back, a friend of mine played with this rod that goes through the, the, the chuck, and he took the quick lock connectors that you have for your air holes, and he put this one coming out the tailstock over here 
And then he snapped his vacuum hose on that one, and he had this lubricate it really well, and at 500 RPMs, it worked pretty good. He had a pretty good bit of vacuum leak there, and ran the heck out of his Venturi, and then when he got to a regular pump. But he found a way to, to make a bearing on it. Now, I haven't played with that, but you adventurous guys will probably play with it now. Right? Right. And I'd like to know how it works. Right? Right. And if you do a picture of it, you'll send it to me and I'll put it on a website. All together. Right? Right. Okay. So that's a little bit of quickie on vacuum chucking. It's not a lot. It took me 10 minutes to put it together today so I could re-sand that piece. Otherwise, I'd have to make a jam chuck, get around it, be reaching through stuff, wouldn't be able to get on the inside. It paid for itself. Just that simple. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. It sucks. Because I'm not making shavings. Did you get that? Vacuum sucks. Did you? Did... Never mind. Bye.